Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new to this channel. If you are new to this channel, my name is Kaylee. I'm an online reseller. I go to thrift stores and I buy items to resell on sites like eBay and Poshmark. And on my channel, I talk about how you can do the same. Every week I like to come on and share what sold from the previous week on all of the platforms that I'm selling on. Currently I sell on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari, although I will tell you that I am sliding away from Mercari, so I'm mainly gonna be focusing on eBay and Poshmark, but I'll be talking about sales on all three of those platforms today. I will also show you a few of my highlighted sales. I've gathered a couple um, that I thought were worth noting and just talk about why I picked them up and why I think I sold for what they did. Don't worry, I did include a cost of goods today. I wasn't gonna say this on this video, but I'm frustrated, so I'm just gonna get it out there. In my last what sold video, I was running short on time, so I did not include cost of goods. And a lot of people left comments or sent me messages about that. What's funny about that is, is that every other what sold video I do include cost of goods, but people were really perturbed by the fact that I did not include cost of goods in my video. First of all, these videos take a ton of time to make. Um, and calculating cost of goods from every single platform does take a lot of calculation on my part. And I really just did not have the time and I would rather get a video up and not include cost of goods than not get um, a what sold video done at all. But besides that, I am mostly just frustrated because I don't know why it is so necessary for everyone watching these videos to know my cost of goods. People also mentioned, fees or how much I pay in supplies. I'm gonna keep this rant short, but if you need to see my cost of goods, my fees, my shipping costs, my rent that I pay for this building in order to run your business, then you're not doing it right. You really need to know your numbers, what you're comfortable with. My cost of goods should not matter to you. Some people wanna argue that newer people watching this channel won't understand the realities of reselling. The truth is my reality might not be their reality when they start reselling. So just to make it clear, everybody does have different costs in their business. My costs might not be the same as yours. My point of sharing these videos is if you are able to do exactly my method or even somewhat close to my method, then you might be able to get the same numbers that I am. If you're not able to do that, what you can take away from these videos is what I'm selling on which platform, what sells best on which platform. My goal with these videos is really to talk about why I'm picking up the items that I do, and why I think they sold for that much, or how quickly they sold. Really, really frustrates me that I got so many nasty messages because I did not include cost of goods in a video. I have a pretty strong stance on it, but a lot of resellers don't share their cost of goods for that reason I just said, which is that every person cannot have the exact same numbers as me and therefore should not follow to a T everything that I do. This also leads to encouragement or discouragement. And if you are following YouTubers and you're not looking into how much eBay fees are, how much Poshmark fees are, knowing what your profit is on each item, knowing what your cost of goods is and be able to subtract that from what the item sold for and know what your true profits are, then you should just probably stop watching YouTube because it's, you cannot follow everything that everybody's doing online. You have to know your own numbers. That rant lasted longer than I expected, um, but I had to get that off my chest because I was super frustrated with some of the messages that I got. If you are new to this channel and you wanna learn about reselling, please do your own research and know what fees go into selling an item because they are going to vary for each person and you need to know. With all that being said, this is probably the only video I'm going to do this, but I will show some cost of goods um, that I experienced for the past week as far as uh, fees on each platform. Let's dive into some of these sales. All right guys, so everything that you see here on this report happened between July 11th through the 17th. That is a Saturday through a Sunday. In total, I sold 76 items for a gross sales total of $2,280.32, making my average sale price exactly $30. Cost of goods for everything that I sold last week was $290.53. My average cost of goods was $3.82. I think that all of this is 
pretty average for me with um, exception to this is significantly lower than usual. I'm usually closer to in the mid 30s to the 40s, but I did make up for that by selling more items. And just because I got so many questions about it last week, I did pull um, right here on my seller dashboard. My selling costs for this time period was a total of $472.08 on eBay. Um, and that does include shipping labels, which were $218.16. You can see the total cost of breakdowns. You can see there's so much that goes into um, all of the eBay fees. Um, this one actually included my subscription fee. So that is where we are at on eBay fees. Um, if you wanted to calculate Poshmark fees, Poshmark's fees are 20% of your gross sales. By the way, um, shipping is basically a wash on Poshmark, meaning the buyer pays for it unless you offer a discounted rate. So it's just 20% off of um, however much you sold. So 0.2 times gross sales of $864 would be Poshmark fees equating to $172.80. Um, again, this is stuff that as a reseller, you need to know your own numbers. And all of this information is available on eBay, on Poshmark, on Mercari, on Depop. Whatever platform you're selling on, you can go look up what the fees are before you start selling. And I highly recommend that you do because I think it's important to know the fees before you even start sourcing. On eBay, I sold 43 items. On Poshmark, I sold 30. And on Mercari, I just sold three. On eBay, I sold a gross sales amount of 1,300-ish dollars. On Poshmark, just over 860. And on Mercari, $85. I do wanna say, as I mentioned before, that I am slowing down on Mercari. Basically, I have stopped listing any new items on Mercari, and we are just allowing what's already on there to sell since we already did the work. Other than that, it's just sitting there. So it's not costing me any money to list items on there, um, but it would cost me in fees if items did sell. Um, and that is the only reason I am leaving items on Mercari is because we've already put in the work. Um, but moving forward, I'm gonna focus all of my energy onto eBay and Poshmark um, and potentially maybe just eBay, but right now I like having a safeguard of Poshmark just in case something were to happen on eBay, um, but I am starting to eliminate other platforms besides eBay and Poshmark, just so you guys know where I'm at in my business. Okay, moving on to some highlighted sales. This is an item I've actually had for a little while, um, but it is sort of a niche item. So. It is a Vintage Guest crop denim jacket. Um, vintage Guest stuff, I wanted to pull this up because Vintage Guest stuff with question mark logos can do extremely well. There is some new age stuff that does include this logo because it was so popular. Um, but the Vintage stuff with these question marks, especially the back patch on the jeans, can do very well. So. I picked this up. I have been sitting on this. This was by no means a quick flip, um, but it did sell for a good price. I originally paid $5 for this. It did sell at my full asking price of $49.99. Next is this Nike Women's Zoom Mariah Fly Knit Racer Running Shoes. Um, you can find out all that information as far as the style name goes by searching this number right here, this AA0521-300 on both shoes, Nike shoes and Nike clothing, this style number is on the tag. So if you find that, you can Google search it and figure out the exact name. So these were in pretty decent condition. Anything with this fly knit material, I always look into as long as the rest of the shoe looks good because this does add value to Nike shoes. It's definitely a bolo. These ones were a larger size in a size 10. I originally had them listed for $59.91 and they sold on an offer for $53.92. Next is this Merrill Men's Pro Shell Gore-Tex Lightweight Jacket. I find that Merrill Men's Jackets do extremely well. Um, I've sold a couple of them this year and they usually sell for quite a bit of money. I actually paid up for this. I paid $20 for it, but I knew that it was gonna flip quickly because of the Gore-Tex. This one ended up selling for my full asking price of $59.94. 
These are a pair of Vionics. Vionics retail for a lot and sometimes can resell for a lot as well. These had a little bit of wear on the soles, but in otherwise excellent condition, and they were that um, snakeskin leather look. These did sell for my full asking price of $34.94. This is one of the t-shirts that I distressed in the Distressed Concert Tees video. I like to pick up new age uh, concert tees at the bins, and then I find that distressing them actually adds value, plus it can be a fun little project. So I believe I picked this up at the bins probably less than a dollar. We took some scissors to it, and it did end up selling at full asking price for $19.95. Had it not been distressed, this is probably like a $10 t-shirt. So if you've got any new age band tees that are just sitting for you, maybe try distressing them and getting them re-uploaded and make sure to include distress. Also make sure not take any scissors to ones that are truly vintage. This is a brand I don't find all the time, but I do love picking up when I come across it. It is Standard by James Purse. It has a really great sell-through rate. This one was a Supima Cotton Crew Neck used t-shirt, and it sold on an offer for $26.97, which is an amazing price for a pre-owned t-shirt. If you come across this in men's or women's, highly, highly recommend picking it. This is something that I found at the bins, and I was not sure if I should pick it up or not because there was some light discoloration throughout. However, it was Lululemon. I decided since they were so lightweight, I probably paid less than a dollar for the two of them. And because they were Lululemon and because they were the exact same size, that I would go ahead and pick them up and list them as a set. They sold extremely quickly. Um, I did price lower than normal because of the stains, but they flipped so quickly at $14.97. I would say in general, Lululemon bras do have a pretty good sell-through rate. However, it's very hard to find them in decent condition. Um, and it's also hard to find them with the bra pads. You'll see I put no bra pads in the title just to be clear in the listing. These are a pair of Miss Me jeans. I am liking picking up Miss Me jeans again for a while. It's something that I just avoided because thrift stores price it up so much. But these we got for $5. They were a pretty decent size, a size 36 waist. And they had some pretty details on the back pockets. I listed these for $34.97. They sold on an offer to watchers for $31.47. I would say in general, if you can get Miss Me jeans for $5 or less, they typically are worth picking up. And I, I tend to look for the larger sizes because I find that that adds value. I sell a lot of American Eagle shorts, especially during this time of the year. And I actually price mine up a little bit if they are distressed. And actually, usually I only pick them up if they are these are also size 12, which I find helps to add value as well. Listed these for $24.97. They did sell at my full asking price. You can pick these kind of shorts up all day long at the bins. Um, and if you find them, they're typically pretty lightweight. So you're only paying about a dollar for each and you can usually flip them between $20 and $25. American Eagle, when it comes to denim shorts, is a very tried and true item for me. All right, moving on to some Poshmark sales. This is a Duluth Trading Company, another brand that I really love picking up that has a good sell-through rate. Men's Striped Henley Shirt. I'm pretty much picking up anything in good condition from this brand these days. Um, I do try to do specific comps, but if I'm getting it at a pretty decent cost, um, these items flip for me all day long. So this was just a men's long sleeve Henley shirt. It sold for $30. And Duluth Trading Company does better in men's than women's, although the women still do pretty decently for me. I'm just a little bit more selective as to what I pick up. Duluth is an outdoorsy brand. It's kind of similar to Carhartt or Ella. So I would definitely keep your eye out for Duluth. These are a pair of New Balance Women's All-Terrain sneakers. Now, I don't pick up every New Balance that I come across, but I do find that the All-Terrains do a lot better, and these were in pretty decent condition. In general, during this time of the year, hiking shoes do very well for me. These ones sold for $40, which is an amazing price for pre-owned New Balance. Also, another pair of shoes. These are a Madewell Women's Leather Booties. 
I find that Madewell leather shoes do pretty well. They're not always the quickest flip, but they do bring in good profits. This one was called the Regan Booty and it sold for $34. Per usual, I'm selling a lot of Torrid. If you guys have not looked up Torrid comps, make sure to do that, especially on eBay where you can quickly check the sell-through rate because sell-through rate for most women's tops is not worth picking up and I usually actually avoid the top section. However, Torrid has a really amazing sell-through rate when it comes to tops. So definitely keep your eye out for Torrid pieces, not just in tops. Um, but if you do come across Torrid Tops, they do have a really good sell-through rate, and this one sold for $27. This is by the brand Equipment Femme. This brand retails for a lot, but does not always have the best sell-through rate when it comes to resell. However, this was a 100% cashmere sweater. And so that definitely upped the value for me. This was also a nice tan color and a modern v-neck. This sold for $42. So amazing profits on certain cashmere pieces when they're paired with higher retailing brands like Equipment Femme. Another sweater that sold for me was this Aran Woolen Mill sweater. I always look for super thick wool all over cable knit detail sweaters. You can see I usually put the uh, word keyword fisherman in the title. That is a great keyword to use if you've got um, something like this. The brand is Aran or Aaron. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but when I see these thick sweaters that are made in Ireland, um, typically I'm picking them up regardless of, and they usually sell for at least 40 to $50. This one in particular, I think was um, a more special color. And so we priced it up and it sold for $80. Another high grossing brand for me is the brand Barber. This tends to have a pretty decent sell-through rate. And if you get in outerwear is incredible. This one was called the Langley Jacket, and as you can see, it is waterproof. This brand does extremely well in a lot of things, but sweaters and jackets, I find, produce the most profit. This one sold for $100, and we are not even into fall or winter. This is something that I picked up for style. I'm not gonna lie, it did take a few more months than I would have liked for it to sell, but it was new with tags and I just loved the style of this. To me, it was very cottagecore with the bright multicolor and kind of the grandma inspired along with it. Um, so I put the word cottagecore in the title, had a pretty decent amount of interest and it did end up selling for $39. Another brand I absolutely love picking up in terms of a decent sell-through rate is the brand Cool. This is another outdoorsy brand. This one was a size extra large. We found this at the bins. It was a men's fleece pullover zip jacket. All their outerwear stuff does extremely well for me. I like picking it up in both men's and women's, but as usual, the men's usually does better. This one sold very quickly at $35. And a couple of the Mercari sales that I had was this Nightmare Before Christmas women's scrub top. Now, I'm not selling a whole lot of scrub tops, but we found this at the Benz, and it was um, Nightmare Before Christmas themed. Certain shows, certain Disney movies can do really well regardless of brand. This one actually was branded Disney Nightmare Before Christmas, and this... Um, movie franchise does extremely well. So I usually look up stuff with it. I sold shirts, I sold uh, blankets. So keep your eye out for that. You definitely want to do specific comps, um, but scrub tops themed this way do tend to do well. This one sold pretty quickly at $24 with free shipping. Another item I sold was this The Sack Women's Leather Handbag. I really like picking up the brand The Sack, um, especially in leather. Here is the um, logo. This one was in pretty decent condition. Again, I try to stick to the 100% leather bags. This one sold on an offer for $32 with free shipping.
All right, guys, so that's it for the what sold video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if your sales are picking back up now that we are moving kind of towards the end of summer and back into a back to school time. I am starting to see sales pick up a little bit. If you're not already subscribed and you would like to be notified when new content goes live, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. That way it alerts you when I make new content. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.